use one schedule in your life. There are a number of people in P&G who keep two schedules. They run Lotus Notes for Proctor, and then they keep a little date book, the old written type, in their purse or pocket. Dumb. In a conflict, the P&G calendar will always win. It always wins. So you have your calendar, and you say, I'm going to play racquetball at 7 p.m. It's not in your Lotus Notes. So one of your people, not knowing that, books a meeting at 6 o'clock and thinking you're still there, or they come to your office in the last minute because they don't see anything on your calendar. You, of course, say, yes, we can meet. And that's how I put on all the weight. I could never work out because I was never keeping, I was keeping two date books. I missed every school play because I never put the school play in my date book. I had it in another date book. So people would book me over lunch, and I can't get mad at them. They don't know. But I would always go to work out at 7 p.m., and it always people would come to my office at the last minute, Jim, can we see you? We got an emergency on this. And I would say, of course. And I would be there till 8 or 9, and I would miss the whole workout. Then it hit me. I've got to put everything in the Lotus Notes. Then I started to book my workouts. I now have all workouts booked all the way to 2009. Booked every day. I don't miss them. I work out seven days a week. It's already booked every day, laid out in my calendar. If you keep two calendars, don't do this. I know you may have a desire to keep your personal life private from P&G life. That's fine. Then use a code system. Okay, like my code, whenever I didn't want anybody to really know, it was a meeting with the landlord. Okay, find a code system. But don't create two calendar systems because you always lose. Your personal life will always take a backseat to Proctor. Number three is a biggie. On the defining moments, you got to pick family. Now, here's the deal. I have studied this myself, and I believe that every one of us has six defining moments a year, or one every two months. A defining moment is the following. Birthday of a loved one, anniversary, family get-together, school play, school sports event, meeting with teachers, or something else important on a personal level. On those things, there's only about one every two months, you do not miss. This is the killer. What happened in my life? I showed up two hours late for my anniversary dinner. So being a typical dumb person, I tried to buy my way out of it with more flowers and more candy. And I showed up at that dinner late with my wife tapping away and sitting there nursing the third or fourth drink. And I, of course, bought extra flowers and extra candy to buy forgiveness. She, being sweet and not wanting to ruin the whole evening, quasi forgives me, but it's still nagging pretty hard. But we get through the evening. Now, it's still simmering in her heart. A week after that, I don't call and say I'm going to be late for dinner. I'm late. When I get home, it's a volcanic eruption. Now, what it took me a while to figure out was missing the normal dinner was not the issue. It was still going back to the anniversary. And I learned a simple thing. All of our loved ones know we have stressful jobs and important jobs, and they're understanding. Like, I'm here now. My wife's in Manila. She's not mad at all. She knows I have to travel. They don't mind the missing the dinner here and there and all that. What kills them is you miss the important stuff. And then that sticks. The negative bank account balance from that can then cause the Vesuvius later on. But the eruption of Mount Vesuvius was started by missing the big thing. So you've got to set the tone on this. Now what happens is I never miss an anniversary or birthday of dinner, never. I'm the only father at every sports event in Manila. And even last week, my daughter's in a, in a soccer game. I was the only dad in the stands. It was a 1 o'clock on a Thursday. I left work, went to the game, and then came back. I was the only dad there. I don't miss a sports event. I don't miss a meeting with the teachers. I don't miss anything. And when I miss the dinners, and I miss them all the time, the standard dinners where I have to meet somebody or an agency guy's flown in, my wife is cool. Because on the big stuff, you don't miss. This is a huge learning. You also have to set the tone as an organization. I have a very clear rule with my people. On this important stuff, if I find out you're missing it for P&G, I will personally throw you in my car and take you to the school play. You will not miss. I don't even want to hear about it. Don't want to hear about it. You go. On the big defining moments, do not send a signal to your family and loved ones that P&G always wins. Number four, you got to take real vacations. Now, 
Many people at P&G live in a world where if they leave and go on vacation, they must take their laptop with them because they are so indispensable to the company that if they're not wired into the business, of course the company will collapse and the share price will go in half and everything will fall apart. I was one of many who lived in that dream world that I was so important to this company that I had to stay wired in their vac vacation. So I would go on vacation, of course I would go skiing in the Alps and every day at noon I'd have lunch with my family and by one o'clock I was back in the hotel room logging on and then in conference calls and the whole bit. Then I led myself to a second lie which was it's really a lot better to do this because I stay on top of my email and when I come back it won't be all backlogged. And so you convince yourself that you're actually doing a very smart thing and that you're much smarter than everybody else who don't do this. And so I go along like that. And then in the summer of 2000, we made a major management change and we got a new CEO. And the new CEO, very brilliant guy, great guy, A.G. Laffley, he sends a letter out to the GBLC, which is the whole GM world. And he says, you know, I'm going on vacation and I'm not taking a computer. I'm just taking my cell phone. Don't send me anything. Don't call me unless it's an absolute emergency. You guys know how to run the business and I'll see you when I get back. And it hit me like a stick over the head. I went, wow, you know, our CEO, who is clearly the most important person in the company with the most responsibility, doesn't feel the need to take a computer on vacation with him. But somehow I do and all my band twos and band ones and band three, everybody thinks they're so important they gotta take their computer. And so I tried something. I didn't take a computer with me. I just took a cell phone I told my team you guys make the calls on it, you're big people, you make the calls, and uh, I'll see you when I get back. Nobody called me, it was amazing, they used to always call me, nobody called me. I came back, the business was fine, and I found out something else, which is the definition of a real vacation. I came back and, you know, I sat there for a while at the computer, and then I had to call the help desk, because I forgot every password. <laughs> and that becomes the definition of a real vacation. It's very simple, if you don't have to call the help desk, you didn't have a real vacation. You must forget all passwords. <laughs> that is the rule of thumb. Number five is master writing. I'm going to give you some stuff later, but you know, we're a writing driven company. I'll give you gym observation number two. Every bad writer in this company has a work life balance issue problem. Every single one. Because they can't handle the workload. They come and they say, I got too much work, we don't have enough staffing, I can't handle the workload. Then you talk to them about the workload, you look at their project list, they have a very standard project list. You dig into it, they don't know how to write. Because they don't know how to write, it takes them forever to do something. Because what should take them an hour to write, takes them a day. So their productivity is just w is wiped. And they get into a vicious cycle that I was in, which is they don't know how to write, so they don't like to write, so they never write. Because they never write, they never get any better. And so therefore, it just keeps going around. So when they do have to write, they really have to, it's a nightmare. I know ABMs and that that spend like three months writing a business review. Three months. It is nothing more than three to four days. But because they don't know how to organize their thoughts and how to sort through data, it takes them forever. And we make this thing from November to January where ABMs are sleeping at their desks and stuff. They don't know how to write. They don't know how to write. You've got to master writing. We're a writing-driven company. I've, lots of, you know, I've had people in the Philippines, they complain. I say, you know what, you know what you're getting into. We're, we're famous for this. Coca-Cola does everything by meetings and PowerPoint. We do everything by writing. You gotta have a system to run a global business. We do it by writing. We've made that choice, and because you don't like it in Manila, we're not changing for you. So either get with it or go somewhere else. We're a writing-driven company. You gotta know how to write here. My biggest edge over a lot of people here is, I'm a faster writer than most people in the company and I write better. And I can nail, like when I write my quarterly letter, never more than 20 minutes, never, never. 20 minutes, done. Store check summaries, 15 to 20. When I launch Syria, I tell people this, when I launch Syria, all categories, I wrote the launch recommendation in an afternoon and it was submitted the next morning. Done, the whole country. Baby care, femme care, hair care and laundry. Launch reco, multi-category. Done in a day. Start to finish. I sat down and cranked it out. You can do this and it takes time. I had on all my early, we didn't have, call them WNDPs then, it was called performance reviews. I had writing as a key opportunity for my first three years in the company. It's the easiest skill in the world to learn. It's the easiest one to teach. When I interview people, I never ask about communication skills. I don't care. Teaching writing and teaching oral communication is the easiest thing in the world. 
give me any one in six months and I can turn them into a master writer. Now what I'm gonna give you is, is that one of the things we've done, we've made big mistakes. When I joined the company, we had a very good two-day course on memo writing, or one-day course, full course, taught, very professional, and they gave you some wonderful handouts. One of them they gave you a handout was, is it helps you simplify the structure. And they tell you, and it's still true to this day, there's only two types of documents in PNG. Information memos, which is to inform, and action memos, which is to ask somebody to do something. There's no third. We either inform or we act. There's a flow for each one. If you master this flow, it helps you structure your thinking. It's a one sheet piece of paper. AG got this when he was in ABM. I got it. Charlie Pierce got it. Martin Nookturn, I mean, all these guys got it. They all got this thing, but we stopped doing it somewhere in the 90s. Somebody got brilliant and said, let's do a web-based program that no one will do. <laughs> and we all talk about it. All the GMs talk about how writing has dropped in this company. That's one of the reasons, like in Manila, as an example, it's so important to me that I've thrown out the window all the web-based stuff. I'm teaching my old memo writing course from 15 years ago, and I'm teaching every session personally because it's that important. The best thing I can do for work-life balance in Manila is teach my organization how to write because they can't write. Nobody can write. And when I tell someone to write a store check summary, I see people sitting at their desk for two straight days struggling when they should crank that thing out in 15 to 20 minutes. But they're dead, and then they're dead, and then they come and they say, I got too much work to do. And I look at their workload and I say, you have a very standard band two workload. The problem is they don't have the skills to handle it. And one of the key skills in this company is writing. Every time I've met a person in our company that can't write, they have a work-life balance issue problem. 1.0 correlation coefficient. 